Okay, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to the January 26, 2021 uh, City Council Workshop. We have a couple of agenda items uh, here this evening. Uh, and I just uh, let the council know, I think there might be some public interest in both of these. So I probably will be allowing some public comment uh, this evening, uh, should there be some requests. Uh, so with that said, uh, for folks uh, viewing online, please ensure that you join this meeting using the following web website address, www.lewistonmaine.gov slash 2021 CC. If you happen to join this meeting uh, using any other link or a link shared to you by somebody else, uh, we recommend that you go back online and uh, log on to the uh, website that I just gave. Uh, and with that said, we'll uh, go right. So can you bring in uh, two folks if they're in the audience, uh, Aisha Hall and Tanya Bailey Curry. Uh, so the first uh, agenda item is a recommendation from the Equity and Diversity Committee. Aisha is coming and Tanya is not yet in the audience. Okay. Uh, if you see her pop in, uh, just let us know and then we'll, we'll check with her to make sure. Hi, Aisha. And you're on mute. Hey, good Hi. evening. Hi there. So, uh, Councilors, this is Aisha Hall. She was the uh, chair of the uh, Equity and Diversity Committee. And uh, I just want to take a moment to acknowledge the hard work that she did because she just reached out to uh, committee members uh, pretty regularly, communicated with them well, uh, worked really closely with uh, our city administrator and deputy city administrator. Uh, and she kept me on track a couple of times. Uh, and Tanya, was Tanya going to be presenting with you this evening? Uh, that's, she did say that. So it, we're, we're going to, she hasn't joined us yet, I don't believe. Uh, but once she does, we'll bring her into the uh, mix. And Aisha, uh, if you're ready, uh, feel free to take it away. So I guess I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, our process. And I would hope feel free because I'm just one voice. So those who were a part of that process with me um, join in. Uh, so for me, when uh, Mayor Care asked me to join, I was mostly inspired not by um, not by him and his asking, but by Dean and Sophia and their passion to really hold this space. Um, and I felt like once that passion um, of the passion all around us and our environment. Um, senseless murders, uh, the pandemic in, in and of itself, um, it, it, I really felt like it was an important, um, it was an important opportunity to use my resources to hold the space. Um, I've, we invited folks that we felt not only represented um, our community, but represented the diversity of our community so that we had voices from, uh, from our community um, that we wanted to hear from. Uh, and so we met with, I'm not sure how many meetings, but I know very quickly into the process, we realized that we would need more time to not only hear those presentations from Chief O'Malley um, and, and our city uh, reps, but we needed time to process that information, to ask questions. And another important thing that I, 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 I found out along the way is that we started out real heady, real uh, logical or technical. It felt kind of, it just, it just, we needed time to, to get to be more relational so that we could have those conversations and open up and be honest about um, our experiences and for our, our, those volunteers that sat on that committee um, to, be, to, to be honest about the experience that they were having in our community to make that a safe space. Um, because the work that we're doing is relational, right? We're changing policies and practices, but like I always say, it's hard work. Um, and so 
as we moved on, I'm glad that we chose to take it in the way that we did because it gave us the opportunity to uh, come together and it feel like a little bit more of a community um, to inform the recommendations that we made. So that is a little bit about our process. I guess we can open it to others. Yeah, you know, so I, I'd like to share a little bit because I, I think as a mayor, I had a lot of growth through that process and uh, Councilor Khalid kind of pushed me a couple of times to to look at this in a different way. And she really was a driver, I think, you know, bringing the resolve, but then a driver of the next steps. Uh, and she insisted on being a, uh, a, a player in this committee, and I appreciate that now. Uh, and then Council of Gelinas, Council of Jensen took some really active roles and participated. Uh, and I think, uh, but I do believe the work of Aisha and Sophia and Noel and Tanya uh, really kind of guided uh, our committee through some really difficult discussions. Uh, so I appreciate all of that. Uh, Sophia, is there any, uh, Council of Khalid, is there anything you'd like to add? Nope, Mayor um, and Aisha, I think you pretty much covered it. Um, yeah, like Aisha said, it was a bumpy start. And then towards the end, um, we really like came to a solid ground um, and, you know, um, brought out good recommendations to support our community members who have long been, um, you know, overlooked. So thank you. Councilor Gelinas or Jensen, anything you'd like to add? I would just say that, you know, you've, you've summed it up nicely, Aisha, in terms of, you know, it was important for us to get to know one another. This was heart work for sure. And, um, you know, like the mayor, I feel like I learned a lot as well, but I feel like there was some really healthy and honest dialogue that uh, went into the formulation of some recommendations. Um, and I would echo the mayor when I said, you just, you did a great job bringing us through that process. Um, and I would add, I don't really have much more to add from um, what the two have previously said. Um, there's a lot of work done on the committee. Um, it's just really good work. There's some really passionate people on there. I think the right voices were on there. Um, this is going to do a lot of good for the city, give us a lot of direction going forward. Um, and I mean, of course, this is because it's the right thing to do, of course, you know, to make better society for everybody. That's, you know, but that's just it. Um, I mean, also thinking in terms of this does make, you know, show the world that Lewiston, we are trying, this is our corner of the woods, and we're going to try and make improvements here. Um, I don't think this is, you know, the end of everything. Of course, it's not, but this is going to do a lot of improvements to the city. So um, I just want to give a, a shout out. Thanks to Aisha um, for, for doing a great job chairing the committee, um, being sure to get everybody's voices and inputs heard. Um, there are a lot of great minds on that committee. I myself am more of like a policy procedure kind of guy, and I didn't always have the most uh, insight and things to add in. Um, so I learned quite a bit in the process from a lot of great people and uh, kind of challenged some of my own biases too. So um, I'm really impressed with the committee. I like a lot of the recommendations coming forward, and I'm happy that we can have a discussion here in the council level about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Dennis, do you have the recommendations right in front of you? Can I also add while he's, while he's pulling those up? Yeah. And one of the most important things, like I'm, I'm pleased as punch with the recommendations that we have, but one of the, the biggest things that came from this, I just piggyback off of what Luke said, is that, and what you said, Mayor, is that process and that growth. We modeled that for our community in a way that that hadn't been done before. Like we, it was bumpy and we stuck it out. It was voluntary and we continued. It went longer than we wanted it to go and that, but we knew it and we stuck that out. And that's that follow through and that continuation. That to me is the biggest recommendation, if any, is to continue to model what it looks like to do this work for our city and for our community. Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think, uh, you know, what I'm gonna do is just, uh, unless you have it right there, Dennis, I'll just start doing a brief summary of some of them and then anyone can chime in uh, uh, more for, you know, the public's sake. Uh, so one of the top recommendations uh, from the committee is to, was to create a new human resource position. Uh, and this position would focus uh, 
on developing a city workforce representative of the demographics of the city and advancing equitable policies, training, uh, training practices and how we do things and procedures and ensuring that the city delivers services in an equitable and inclusive manner. Uh, so this human resource position is not a position that, you know, is going to uh, dictate what our department has to do. They're really going to truly look at uh, everything we do uh, uh, through our city uh, to make sure that we're covering, you know, uh, what, what all of our citizens deserve, you know, uh, that equity and that uh, building a workforce that really represent our community. Uh, the resource department will monitor and issue annual public reports on diversity in the city workforce to include information on staff promotion and diversity of management or supervisory positions. Uh, and then uh, they'll update the city's discrimination policies and be more proactive, directly naming the advancing of uh, equity and inclusion as a priority. Uh, are you sure anything you want to talk about in the, of the importance of that position? Only that representation is important. And, and we wanted to um, be sure that when we're recruiting for that, that for that position, that it represents um, the community and the most vulnerable of our community. Um, right. that, that makes sense to do that. It's the right thing to do. All right, thank you. And then, uh, so the next recommendation is increased community engagement. Uh, and that does really talk to uh, the police department a bit more. Uh, you know, I remember back in, uh, you know, back when I was on a council, we had the Operation Hotspots and there was an incredible amount of uh, community engagement by the police department through that process. Uh, and, and all, all uh, our, you know, any community member that took part of it, no matter what part of the demographics you're in, they were just, you could just see it. They were so thankful that the police department took time to sit there and hear their concerns. Uh, a little bit different subject. Uh, but I think this is gonna provide us that same opportunity on a more ongoing basis. Uh, and anytime we allow the community to share their, their thoughts and what their vision of the city should be, uh, but also taking the time to listen to, you know, the, uh, the leaders in the police department on what their hopes are. Uh, nothing but good can come out of that. Uh, but those uh, dialogues, I think, will even spread, you know, to city administration and councilors being en more engaging with our community. Uh, and then to develop and co-facilitate a series of informal community conversations on police interactions with uh, Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities focusing on topic, topics related to bias, race, and racism, and community policing. Uh, I think that's probably one of the more powerful ones here because it'll give police officers and our leaders and uh, uh, our community of uh, uh, people of color uh, an opportunity to have those tough discussions. Uh, because I know I find it challenging sometimes as a, as a white person to have discussions with people about biases. Uh, and it took many, many conversations for me to recognize, well, even though I, I truly have always lived my life to be accepting of everybody, you know, there is just this natural bias that we have to just, you know, try to remind ourselves of. Uh, and that's probably where the biggest learning piece came for me as, as a person versus as an elected uh, official. Uh, Aisha or anyone else on the committee, I apologize before, but anything you'd like to add about the importance of that? I'll say, I'll jump in and say, um, just as we modeled that work, creating those spaces um, and using those spaces ongoing and making that that consistency is also an aspect of creating that safe space. Um, and it took us a while to get to that space where uh, the folks of color on a, on our um, panel and our committee were, was able to express wholeheartedly um, what that experience was and how we can be okay to, to make that a, to make that a recommendation and it be heard and something happened with it. Even throughout that process, it still took a long time. And 
to be able to inform to inform our community of the experiences of folks that aren't being heard is only going to help but you have to create the space you can't just make the space and say yes let's here right now what what do you need and then um, expect folks to respond in that way and so I really I, I feel when, when we talk about increasing that community engagement making it consistent and reliable for um, those folks who are vulnerable and may not um, often take that opportunity when they have it because it's, it's just not a safe space. All right. Thank you. Uh, no. oh, welcome, Tanya. Uh, hey, Tanya. Sorry, I was in the webinar. I was like, oops, wrong link. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, this is Tanya Bailey Curry. She uh, took a very active role in the committee and I think assisted uh, Aisha and city administration several times. So welcome. Uh, so recommended, recommendation C, uh, to improve services for our vulnerable populations. The Lewiston Police Department should establish policies and procedures that consider the specific and unique circumstances when working with members of the vulnerable populations within the community, including but not uh, limited to lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, uh, comma, <laughs> uh, children impact. Oh, also uh, paying special attention if children are present uh, uh, during uh, an arrest and what those impacts might have on that children and family, uh, and especially those struggling with mental health uh, issues and or substance misuse issues. And there are uh, several others, and and I think what that's asking is our, our police department just to understand that sometimes they deal with a population, uh, and you know for police officers a lot of times it's kind of a black and white job. You go in, you see a crime, and you know you, you do what's expected of you in a community to make sure that the community is safe. Uh, but even I, as a police officer, I, you know I've arrested uh, many people with children present, and. Uh, you know, it's more about safety and you're not quite thinking about some of the ramifications that might occur during that arrest that you won't see because you're going to take that person to jail. Uh, this is uh, encouraging our police chief to, and, and our command staff at the police department to really look at that and have those discussions with officers. Uh, would anybody else like to add uh, the importance of anything on the importance of that? So I'll, I'll jump in and say it was important to me to have um, individuals that represent the mental health and, and health services support because as we become informed about trauma and the, um, the impact of trauma, we have to inform our work. And if there's no one there to let us know that, that there's new information, um, it can inform our work. So that was really important to me to have Tanya um, and, and I think we had another someone representing um, social services on, on our um, panel. Oh, but it was really, as well. Right. Oh, sorry. There you go. See? So, right. so I, you want to talk about that one? It... Tanya, do you have anything? Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, well, I, I just, I think one of the, the things that I really like to elevate when we have these conversations around the importance of thinking about that ripple effect is, you know, it has a financial um, impact as well because when we traumatize children even when they're not showing signs of it young um, when they become adults and haven't had the opportunity to process that trauma and unfortunately often have just compound trauma they become adults that mimic those same behaviors and then we have just a long-standing issue and we see I think I think even um, Chief O'Malley talked about you know it's a lot of the same people a lot of the same families and, you know, I think if we have interventions and appropriate interventions and officers that look at, look at their interaction through a trauma-informed lens, then our results are better across the board. Thank you. Uh, Dale, can you bring in uh, Chief O'Malley as well? And then, uh, so the final uh, recommendation, and I think it goes to what, uh, Councilor Jensen spoke of is what's next, you know, where, where, where do we go from here? Because we, yes, we did a stretch of hard work, but that doesn't mean that, you know, it's all over. Uh, 
I want to acknowledge one real quick thing, and then I'm going to turn it over to the chief uh, to talk a little bit about city spirit and how he thinks that that might, you know, further the work of this committee. Uh, I, I believe, and anybody can jump in and, and if they have a different thought process on this, but I think from the beginning, uh, the work of the Equity and Diversity Committee was never an attack uh, on the the good men and women that serve this community and the police department. But there was an expectation that we would look inward and we asked, you know, our police department and police officers to look inward, you know, we can be doing everything right in the community, but that doesn't mean that we still can't do it better. And I think that's kind of the lens that this committee uh, went at this. Uh, would you agree, Aisha, Tanya? Absolutely. Yeah, and I hope I hope the chief felt that as well as this committee worked through the process. Uh, but with that said, I, I would I would like to turn it over to Chief O'Malley uh, so that he could speak a little bit about the City Spirit Council. Thank you, Mayor. Um, City Spirit is a, a program um, that I got from the Department of Justice. Um, this was back in 2018 after the murder of Donald Juste. Um, Fatuma Hussein and I um, organized this uh, meeting. Um, we met actually over at Central Maine Community College. We had many different people. Um, what I liked about it was we had people from the city, from the uh, school department, from the police department, um, various uh, religious leaders, um, nonprofits, um, folks from Tree Street, Root Cellar, um, who all, who all met together. Um, City Spirit, the, the spirit pot stands for a site problem identification and resolution of issues together. A lot easier to say spirit than say that. That's uh, a lot to say. Um, but what it does is it brings everybody in the community, brings leaders, but also brings people out in the, um, in the community who are doing work in the community uh, to come together to identi identify issues. So this was pre-George Floyd. This was um, you know two years prior. Um, the first event that we organized through this uh, and we had the uh, Chamber of Commerce um, donated money for t-shirts um, was the Peace in the Park um, project where we had volunteers out there. It's a little like the green dot training de-escalation. I'm um, just having extra folks out in the community walking around. We had a wide range of uh, ages and, and folks that took part in that. Um, we had the cooperation of Bates College allowed us some space. We had uh, a city councilor, then Mayor Clucci um, was involved in this as well. Um, I think we had over 70 people that attended um, in 2019 um, and identifying several different issues. Um, we had young people attend as well um, from the schools. It wasn't just all, um, you know, just leaders of the community because the idea is to get this out as much as we can. Um, we identified some, some issues. Uh, there was a top issue that we um, wanted to work on as this work began. Uh, Fatuma Hussein was great in terms of getting a, um, a grant for us, in terms of getting somebody to help facilitate, coordinate, someone who's had experience. Um, we felt our first goal should be writing an equity statement. Um, an equity statement, not just for the police department, but for the city, for the school department. And it's Lewiston and Auburn. It's not just Lewiston. This is a Lewiston Auburn led um, city spirit program. Um, we're in the middle of that now. Actually, several people um, on this Zoom right now are um, part of City Spirit. We actually had a two-hour meeting uh, today. We're coming to the end, I think, of um, finishing our equity statement. We're also reaching out on social media, trying to get uh, input from folks in the community. You know, we're not just going to say this is what your equity statement is. We want feedback from the community. So I think this is that's just the beginning, and this is uh, ongoing work. Um, just like uh, Aisha talked about, that this isn't a one and done thing. I think this, this work is gonna continue. I think it's very important for everybody in the city to recognize that people have different perspectives than they have of their dealings with the police, their dealings with the courts, their dealings with the schools, their dealings with the clerks, or you know anybody in the community. We, I think we need to make sure we recognize that, that we all have the same perspective um, and, and take that in consideration when we're making decisions of equity and, and whatever else decisions you folks are gonna make tonight and, and going forward. So I think, um, I, I like the fact that this work started. I had no problem um, presenting a lot of the information um, to this equity and diversity committee. I welcome the opportunity. 
I think the more um, openness and exchange of information and dialogue we have is better for the city. Um, we've had a lot of uh, the Citizens Police Academies. Um, unfortunately, with COVID this past year, we, we didn't get to do any, but we get a lot of different people that come in to the police department to see what we, we do um, to get a better understanding of what the police do. So I think the city spare program uh, will continue. Um, members are on that where we welcome more people to join. This isn't like, no, you can't join. We, we welcome to have the input from everyone. So I think this is a, a recommendation that I can clearly see will continue the work we're doing, but also continue the work of the mayor's equity and diversity committee. All right, thank you, Chief. Anybody else like to add to that? I'll, I will. That one thing that I've appreciated and, and one goal that I've had for myself at the school district is to bring folks together, to collaborate as, as one unit, <laughs> trying to move us forward. And it has been such a joy to, to run into Chief O'Malley at those meetings and, and just seeing folks in places and spaces where I feel like I'm a part of a community. And so I don't feel like there should be a reason to reinvent a wheel. Like that city spirit is represent, like I see a lot of folks. And for me, when I, what, what it makes me want to do is represent my school district a, a little bit harder. Cause I know we're going to our city to, to be accountable and say, this is what we're doing. What can we do to help? And, and this is how you can help us that it just makes sense to continue that, that synergy that's happening. Um, Cause like I said, once all of the, the, the tide will, will shift, things will, will die down and we'll still have those, those moments where we need to come together and continue to move this forward or we'll just be up again. Um, and so like, I, I really do uh, like that the city spirit committee already existed so we're not recreating things and that it's something that is open to our community. Um, so we're not just hearing from just one or two folks and maybe a focus group every now and then. So that's, that's my input on that. Okay, thank you. Tanya, anything you'd like to add? Yes. I, you're so smart in your care. Um, I, <laughs> I think one of the things, I, initially I was hesitant um, around the idea. Um, and I think part of it for me um, really came from past initiatives that we've done in the city that just didn't have enough legs underneath them, so they didn't last. So the, um, you know, the people that were meant to be served by initiatives were, were actually um, hurt um, for lack of progress. So um, I love the fact that this was already established um, pre-George Floyd and um, that we are welcoming the input of others to join in, to have input, to have a say, and to, uh, to really understand what it means to be a part of City Spirit, but also recognizing that we're all a part of it in some form or fashion, um, if we are committed to the progress in our community. So um, I'm on board. All right, thank you. Uh, so just, uh, I'll turn it over to our city administrator to, to, to you know, give him an opportunity to say anything he would like, and then I'll turn it over to the council for questions. Uh, Thank you, <laughs> Mayor. Uh, I, I really don't know how much more I could add at this point. I think there's been a lot of you know great information shared. Just other than um, you know my appreciation to the committee, um, to uh, you know staff, Chief O'Malley um, was there every meeting um, and really um, you know really presented a lot of information um, in, in, a, in a very short amount of time, and it was it's certainly a challenge all the way around. But I just think the the committee's work um, was certainly good work, and, and we landed in a good good place with a, a slate of recommendations that I do believe um, will make the city better um, in the long run. And uh, we're looking forward to uh, working through the implementation of that over in, in, as we move forward. But um, just thank everyone for all their hard work on this. Certainly, good outcome. And this will be on the next agenda for a vote. Yes, uh, we would put this on the next uh, regular meeting, which would be. Um, February 2nd, this will actually be on for the council to adopt the recommendations at that point. Um, to be clear, and just on that point, I uh, just to remind everyone and make sure we're clear on it, the positions that are uh, recommended in there, especially the HR position, obviously, um, and, and that work, and the training, um, all of those, anything with a monetary or budgetary impact um, will go through the normal budget process uh, for FY22. So we'll be starting that here shortly. 
Um, the position of the HR position will be a new program and service for consideration by the council through, again, that uh, regular normal budget process. Um, so just adopting the recommendations next week or next meeting on the second is just simply adopting the recommendations. There's no there's no budget impact with those recommendations at this point until you adopt the actual budget for that. So. Thank you. Uh, with that, I turn it over to the council for any questions or comments. Okay. Uh, anyone in the uh, public wish to make comments? Okay, I, uh, I see two hands. If we could start with uh, Hawa, and then after Hawa, we'll bring Melinda Scott in. Hi, good evening. Thank you for allowing us to speak. Um, I was, you know, I, to being part of this group was a really, um, I like how we, from different angles, people, you know, us coming together and working together and everybody's voicing their opinion. And um, at the end of the day, I think I feel like we can put, we put the efforts together and we're able to um, come up with a recommendation. We're able to compromise some in halfway. And I really appreciate everybody's uh, input. And I, I'm really glad that this work is coming to forth because, you know, it's a long overdue. And, um, you know, I'm really glad I appreciate, you know, Chief O'Malley for doing the presentation, going more details of uh, the work they do, and I really appreciate it. Um, and I really appreciate it to be part of this team. Thank you, guys. Okay, thank you, Hawa. And we're just waiting for Linda Scott. She should be here any second. Hey, good evening, uh, Linda. You're on mute. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. I appreciate the opportunity to say something this evening. Um, first off, I'd just like to say that I really want to thank the committee for the great work done here. Having watched all the meetings, I was really encouraged and thankful that these hard conversations were being had. Um, I, I, I wish that we had been working on something like this many years ago. Um, but what I'd like to suggest this evening is that if the police department in the city are serious about implementing these recommendations and really want to go from being reactive to proactive as we normally are, uh, we need to recognize and use the assets we already have in place. And I would suggest that a perfect example of an asset we already have in place is Officer Philippon. Officer Philippon has already established relationships through our city. He has been the conduit and li liaison for the police department on many committees. He has built trust with our new Mainer community. And unfortunately, as we see in the paper constantly, and his name is used constantly, he seems to be the go-to police officer when racial issues arise in our community. Um, I think that he also has a very good understanding and a good place to move us forward into policing in the 21st century. Please let us be leaders here and embrace the changes needed for the betterment, betterment of all in our city. I would encourage you all to support these recommendations and I thank you for the opportunity to say something this evening. Okay, thank you. And I'll uh, bring it back to the council, Councilor Ray. Thank you. Um, I have two questions and then a comment. Can you hear me? Oh, there we go. My box wasn't lighting up. Um, so the first question was, um, it, would it be possible to um, name those who are on the committee as part of the recommendations? I think um, one thing that was really great about last night's school committee poverty awareness subcommittee report presentation was it named everyone. So you, and there was also a note about limiting factors about who was at the table and who wasn't. I, I think that would be, I'm not seeing it here, maybe I'm missing it, but I think that would be incredibly helpful. Um, and let me just interrupt you for a second. So as uh, uh, the counselors are asking questions, um, we're gonna to shift to Sophia shortly. Dale or Dennis, can you get prepared with that list? I don't have that in front of me. All right. Awesome, thank you. Um, the second question was, 
would now be a time to ask questions about the HR position or at the budget meeting? No, I think it's appropriate to ask okay. some questions now. Okay, it's, I, I love the idea of it. It's such a big role and is going to take buy-in from everyone. And so I'm just wondering if there's a vision for what that looks like for growth over time, or is it just this one person's responsibility to try to onboard folks and, and that's sort of, I just want to kind of understand where city administration wants to take that in the future because I think it's a great signal and could be a recruitment tool, um, you know, saying this is what this city stands for. And if you're going to work here, you need to have the same collaborative cultural like that we have here. So I'm just curious if someone could speak to that. Sure, <clears throat> I can speak to it uh, briefly. Um, I think I think our ultimate goal would be to establish this position, get started um, and work on this. I would think the opportunity for growth, there is an opportunity for growth in that in that regard. Um, what that looks like, I think it's just too early for us to be able to say right now. Um, I think I I think it's appropriate for us to take the recommendations we have um, and really see this position um, as being a major factor uh, or major player, obviously, in helping us implement all of these recommendations and ensuring that going forward. And then I think once we get through that, you know, some point in the process or through that some time and we have an opportunity to evaluate, um, you know, like any, any position we look at, we would certainly continue to evaluate it and look at the overall delivery of services both internally and externally outside the city um, from this position and just how that looks and determine needs. Um, and if, if there's additional needs and, and resources needed to continue that mission, then and that's certainly what we would look to do is, is, is grow that um, or potentially even look at uh, making changes, um, you know, again, to those positions just as needed as we continue to grow and, and evolve, I, I would say, through that in that setting. That's great. Thank you. And then just my comment on this, I, I want to thank everyone for their work, but it's so amazing to hear from folks uh, that they're recognizing the privilege and acknowledging the privilege that they bring to these conversations over the past six to eight months, um, what a change that is. And I think it's an indicator that, you know, when we had these conversations last summer, they were really hard because I personally, and I, I believe the council didn't wanna label any department or any person who works here as racist, but call to action that we should be striving to be anti-racist and to be as inclusive as is possible and what that means to each individual member of the community coming from the institution that is the city. And I just, to, to have that vocabulary be part of a public government conversation is really astounding to me, having been around it for however many years. Um, there's, there's this real shift in dynamic that um, is palpable over that time. And so I just wanna credit everyone who is taking on and doing that work um, and, and continue to challenge us to do so in the future. All right, thank you. Uh, do we have that list ready? Okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, so chair uh, of the, the, the committee was Aisha Hall, co-chair was Mayor Mark Kerr. Uh, appointed committee members were Sophia Khalid, a counselor, city councilor Luke Jensen, city councilor Stephanie Gelinas, uh, Andy Duramo, Noel Chaddock, Tanya Bailey Curry, Hawa Abdu, Elgin Physic, Dane Morgan, and James Ford. Um, I think it's important to note maybe just a few other folks um, that maybe not official members. Laura Ligori um, was participated in, in almost every meeting and, and, and certainly supported the committee. And then I, I just would like to recognize, I guess, the staff, uh, Dale Doughty, Deputy City Administrator, um, Marcella Perez, uh, our library director, played a significant role in supporting in, in, in this effort. Um, and then really behind the scenes, our, our Heather Terrio out of our human resources department, who never made it to maybe a committee member, but I assure you her work and effort uh, supporting us and making this uh, happen was, was there. Um, and then as, as I've already mentioned, uh, Chief O'Malley um, was a consistent uh, member as well um, or participant. So I believe that's the full list. And I, I won't name them publicly, but there are, there are a couple of uh, community members that attended every single meeting and chimed in repeatedly. And uh, 
I, they brought incredible value, I think, uh, to the work of the committee uh, and challenged us a couple of times, I think, so. It was very encouraging. I felt really supported by knowing that they were there listening and I was representing them. So it made it really honorable to hold that space knowing that they would be there every week. Yeah. Thank you to you all. I know you're out there listening again. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they are because I, I, I do want them to recognize that I thought they were brought so much value to the committee. Uh, Councilor Khalid. Um, thank you, Mayor, but my question was already answered. So thank okay. You. All right, thanks. Did we shout Dennis out? Dennis was a rock star all the way to the end um, and was a great support to me um, when I text and say, I don't know what to do. I'm nervous. Is this going to be okay? I don't know. Can we do this another time? What am I supposed to say this time? It was always, you got this, Aisha. So I really do appreciate that. And Mayor Kay, I really want to say I appreciate you um, and your confidence in me to hold this space objectively um, with all of that's happening right now in, in, in our city. So kudos to you. Yeah, and I remember that initial call to you because uh, <laughs> Uh, so I said to Aisha, I said, you know, we really would like to have you on this committee. Okay, can I think of it? And I think about it. And I said, no, I really need an answer today. <laughs> I said, just say yes, and we'll figure it out afterwards. And uh, she did. So, all right. With, uh, with that all said, uh, thank you all so much uh, for this discussion tonight. And thank you, uh, Aisha and Tanya, for attending the meeting and actually putting yourself out there having this discussion. So thank you so much. Thanks for having me. All right. Yeah. Okay, we'll move to uh, item two, which is a presentation of a draft uh, recreation plan. And I'll, I think I'll turn it over to Dennis first to do the kind of the intro into the subject. Sure, thank you, uh, Mayor, City Councilors. Um, so what you're going to hear tonight is uh, we'll bring in um, our Director of Public Works, Marianne uh, Brenchik, um, and I believe uh, Jake Langley from the School Department will also join. Um, you're, going to, uh, you're going to get a brief presentation on an outline, uh, more or less of a, that will outline some, some themes um, that you're going to see in a, in, a, in a later time in a much more detailed uh, plan. Um, tonight, what we'd like to do is share some of those themes, also talk about some visioning um, of where we wanna go with the department um, and, and where we want to take it. Um, the themes I think you're going to hear is building on our current successes, um, building stronger partnerships throughout the community, um, and really looking to grow our programs across the board. Um, I think what we offer now is just the start, um, and I think there's a strong energy in the, in, in the city staff and uh, from Marianne and, and folks that have been engaged in this process to really expand on those program offerings. Um, so. You know, with that, um, I think the biggest piece that, you know, I want to stress, you know, for the council and the mayor is, is we want your feedback tonight. We want to hear. We're early in this process, um, very early in this planning process, and we want to hear from you what those vision and where you want to see recreation going, as well as from community members, anyone that is here tonight to speak, because this is the time that we want to hear it. So that way, when we put this plan on paper, really, really, uh, you know, uh, detailed, we want to be able to capture those visions and, and, and carry that out through the plan. So with all that said in that intro, uh, hopefully they gave enough time for Marianne and Jake to get settled in. I'm going to turn it over to Marianne and uh, have her uh, take us away on the presentation. And you're on mute. <laughs> Can we unmute her? Or, no, that has to be done directly there. Huh? Here we go. Thanks, you guys. Sorry. <laughs> I was having a hard time getting my PowerPoint up in the background. Let me tell you, I'm just going to have a conversation next time because that's way easier. <laughs> but really excited to kind of not give a whole plan, but just begin the conversation. Uh, you know, I've been new in, in public works. This is going on my fourth month and just really over the top excited to get started and looking at RAC a bit deeper um, in good timing. I mean, uh, fresh energy, new start. 
Um, we have a new superintendent that will be advertised for this week, hopefully a new coordinator um, in July. So lots of good timing and just very excited to kind of, you know, share with you a short PowerPoint. And then I have um, the superintendent with us uh, so that he's also been a partner with us for the last three months and just helping develop these first steps. So um, I will introduce him in the end. Okay, so how do I do this whole sharing in the end? I gotta share my screen now. I had it set up at one time. Here we go. Awesome, there we go. All right, so, you know, really looking at reimagining a new vision for recreation includes all of us. It's not just the conversations that I've had so far. It's really looking into the public and looking at staff and, you know, just starting some of those pieces is again and bringing you all in at this point now. Um, but can't really start without really recognizing the strong foundation that was started already. I mean, the upgrades to the armory when I walked in there and saw that gym floor, it's beautiful. So we have a great facility, but it really doesn't define us. We still have a lot of parks who are outside of activities as well as partners. Um, so really kind of looking outside the envelope of just the armory and excited to do that. And again, you know, coming from an engineering standpoint, I think strategic planning is a place to start, but we've also already identified some in-house talent, um, amazing skills around us and started to develop partnerships with an early phone call with, you know, Councilor Galinas and also Councilor Khalid and just looking at who's partners out there that we can have for these focus groups and stakeholders and, you know, starting this process included partnerships, but it also included placemaking. So tonight we're gonna to focus on the strategic planning side of it because that is the beginning of our discussion. So know that there's other steps that are rolling along the way at the same time, but um, digging deeper with the be beginning with the end in mind. And in the public works division, we've now um, gotten feedback from a hundred of our employees and looking at what their vision is. And just like we're gonna be asking you today, what is your ideal vision of what public works recreation division should be? Um, what are our top values? What do we wanna see? What do we do well? What do we not do well? Um, so looking at those pieces is already underway in public works so that we can dig deeper into this one division that is under our umbrella and is you know, very important to us. And I think a part of public works is a big division too. There's a big department with tons of divisions under it is that no one is an island of their own, that we all work together. And even as one city, when we've been engaging with other department heads, is that everybody is in this. Everyone touches a piece of recreation. And that's, that's exciting to me. Um, to bring in a little bit of stats, and this is the only one with numbers on it, believe it or not, as an engineer, but 60% of the achievement gap is due and explained by access to quality aftercare programs. So what this tells me is that it's more than just fun. It's more than just activity for kids. It's their connections to doing better academically. It's better for them to do the social, emotional, um, physical pieces, but also just the economic side of building uh, you know, healthy communities. And um, I think it's all of that. And so, like I said, the first partner that we brought in tonight was Jake because it's a lot about education and bringing those links together. Um, and then three different really big parts of the strategic plan is a big master plan for all our open space. We don't have that, okay? So we need that still, and we're not really planning on doing this this next year, but a year out as we gather the data, we've been looking at maps to look at equity geographically on a map. Where are our programs being held? Where are the students that need most of these services? But where is our K through gray? It's everybody. You know, and so we have that bigger picture under this master plan and we've started to gather all of those assets that we have. And even outside of the city of Lewis and what are our assets that we have in our region? And then it digs down into a program plan and your program plan is a template for every year to be updated. What is our goals for this year and how does it meet those target outcomes that we talk about in our focus groups and we develop together? So your, your program plan is doing that every year. So it's not a one-time focus group, sort of like they had talked about in the equity and diversity, it's ongoing conversations and feedback to what's working well, what's not, what can we improve? And we use this as a template for us. And then a business plan is how do we fund all of this? And you know the challenges with that is it is the biggest non-tax revenue source when it's operating you know, and getting it built up to be that is that it still needs support. And so really looking for you know, national standards to what the best way to fund and to run a recreation division, which is different than others. Um, it's not a, 
uh, enterprise account like our utilities. It's different. Um, we also have to really consider the socioeconomic ability to pay. Um, so all of those pieces kind of come together under finances, whether it's grants and fundraising and you know, operating budget as well. So all of those pieces are very important. And we feel like we're working intensely on the program plan and the business plan um, in this upcoming year. And just one of my visions is to have the one program that tells you everything that's going on in the city. It might be impossible, I don't know, but you've got to think the impossible because you can't do that alone. You have to do it with other people. So Peter, who's in our graphics and communications division up in MIS, has helped to just design a new look to what does our program booklet look like? How does it highlight people in the community as well as programs? And it doesn't matter who's running them. It's what do we have? What's fun? What's fun going on in Lawston? So that we want to know that we're letting it be an easy one source and it's underway right now being developed. And this is one of the first pages for our winter seasonal book. And then looking at strands and different you know, themes of what we want to be, whether it's adults or youth or seniors, whatever it is, part of it comes under skill development. And you'll see, I really want your input of whether I'm missing any big topics uh, because there's so much that comes under each one of those, but skill development is all your sports and we do well at sports. I think the recreation division, look at these champions. This is a picture of Lawston. You know, we do well at these sports. We're growing our teams in high school, but it's also to play for fun. And one new really cool fun that we have coming up in July is rowing in the Andrus Goggin. So getting some more um, recreation on the river. And so we have an exhibition coming up in July. So that's one of our new partners under skill development. And then health, well-being, and socialization. That again includes all ages, it includes partnerships with other nonprofits, with other businesses. Um, and looking at what's a variety of things that could come under that kind of a topic. Um, and, and engaging the, you know, the health fields as well as, you know, mental health is a big part of what's going on right now and needs help. And just what's a really neat program that we have going on that ties in skill development and health is the Rosati uh, leadership program. And Chris White has a group that comes in and they do soccer. And these kids work for about 15 minutes and then they're all laying on the ground on their mats doing mindful breathing. It's interesting, these are young kids, you guys. And just really kind of looking at music therapy and TED Talks and motivation. And then they go play for another half an hour. And then they sit in a circle and they share about their life, what's going on and communication skills. And just to see those two things working together, that's an after school program that we're running right now. Um, it's exciting. It's fun. I love that holistic piece of how health and well-being is now part of skill development as well. And then just recently talked to um, the public theater about coming in and looking at our arts and culture um, because there's programs that other people are doing, but how can we blend with that? And I think, you know, we always build students up to be better sports and teams for the high school, but what are we doing at the, at the beginning levels of building arts and culture and, and a love and energy for that, that students don't even know what they don't know. So giving them those experiences and a little bit more of a variety. I know the public theater is already interested in partnering with us as well as Trinity Church and how they're looking at gutting that out and making it a, an art space as well as still being church and still being the food center underneath. So public works and you know, the, the rec division has talked to them in early conversations to be a part of it. And then lifelong learning um, you know, is teaming up with our partners with a senior program that's already active and underway um, and looking at growing that and looking at opportunities from 18 all the way to gray and the career center's ideas. Cause I think when I talked to a mentored, mentored a woman from Lawston today, who's 30 years old, you know, just looking at her career at that age. So there's so much more that happens after the age of 18 that we still need to mentor kids and in, in people in their careers and lifelong coaching. But we'll also hit that academic coaching that's needed because of COVID. I mean, we will not let our kids get behind. And so we, we wanna help. So we're setting up classrooms in some of our upstairs rooms to be able to you know, help students fill the gaps before they get to their next grade. And that's something that Jake will talk about a little bit more, but we wanna be a resource for that. We wanna help. And, you know, it certainly can be tied in with our recreational programs. The main career center wants to have a satellite vision version of their services that could be a little bit more walkable um, and walk up than their facility over on, I don't know what the name of that road is, but you know where they are. And then diversity and inclusion. And I love following the program that you guys just had because I feel like that's in, in recreation as well. Um, it touches all of us and I'm excited to be trained more 
um, to be more inclusive because I feel like we all come with our own biases when we're not even trying to. Um, but we do, and just being able to be more inclusive, more open, beautiful playground. I, I was on this playground today, you guys. It is gorgeous. What a you know beautiful thing for the city to have for all ages, for all kids. Um, but the inclusiveness of that and, and looking for other programs that where we can integrate that and talked with Misty today about ideas on this other program. So it's fun that we you know get to work together on all of that. But in the end, I mean, I really want to strive. I'm a people person. The ultimate goal is developing stronger relationships, whether you're playing pickleball together or cribbage or having that conversation about what's the vision that we want for, for the new um, reimagining. It's all about building stronger relationships with each other and I'm thrilled and excited for that. And with that, I would love to introduce Jake um, and let him say a little bit about what he feels like our partnership needs to be um, as we're one family in the city and some of the work that we've already done and some of his immediate needs. So I will pass this over to Jake and then we both can answer any questions. I did that okay. <laughs> Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, yeah, I would say that this we're, we're early in conversation uh, for sure. Um, I, I'd like to thank staff, um, even uh, just before Mary joined the team for taking the time to say, you know, what are some of the barriers that we can identify and grow the opportunities in our community? Uh, so that work has already begun and I, I look forward to the future. Um, I do think there's a lot of potential um, around many areas that Mary mentioned, academics, enrichment, mentor programs, tutoring, arts, expression, wellness, uh, and experiential opportunities. Um, but I still think that we have to invest in our community. Uh, and I think that's one of the things that we started talking about is, you know, from the school side of things, whether it's budgetarily or other, what are ways in which we can collaborate? Um, so if, if space is an issue, you know, does the school system have an open gym or, or classrooms that could be shared? Um, if we have funding opportunities, you know, do they pair well with the recreation department and how can we maximize that, that ability to provide different opportunities for students? Um, I know that uh, Elgin Physic, who's a member of the school committee, uh, has been an active member of this conversation as well. Um, and, and he and I have had conversations about how do we keep the lights on so that things don't shut down for kids at three, four, five o'clock in the afternoon and give them some opportunities to be engaged in something bigger than themselves. Uh, and I think it takes an investment. I know that you know, the resources are finite, but uh, I look forward to future collaborations and opportunities to try to find those dollars to keep things going, keep things moving for kids. I think we have a lot more volunteers in our community that are, that are willing to help if they have the space and the place. Thanks, Jake. I, uh, you know, I, I want to acknowledge, so Elgin at one point, a couple of months ago, reached out to me. And then I think we had a conversation with Jake. And I think I, the first question I, that was brought up, and I can't remember how it came about, but was about all these gyms sitting i think i think six schools is that what we have uh that just are not utilized and jake was so quick to say we have to change that we have to we have to work uh with our community so that our gyms are utilized uh and so i was really impressed with that and almost immediately knew at that point that we're going to have a good partnership with the school when it comes to recreation uh jake and uh, uh councilor ray i just you know, you, you heard a presentation last night about uh, the poverty committee and as Mary Ann went through those slides, that is going to be just such a potential uh, for what the poverty committee is trying to do uh, with the, the students in our community. So that, that's what I saw and heard. Uh, Mary Ann, do you have anything else you'd like to add before I turn it over to the council? No, just excited to hear your vision, you guys, and just really be part of this continuous conversation. So we're open for any early questions. I can answer what I can, and I'm learning so much every day. So, All right. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ray. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so a bunch of things. Um, so prior to recent turnover of rec staff, um, I was in lots of communication. The armory is in my ward, and, um, you know, I've worked with the seniors and some soccer groups in the past, all, I don't know, they all come to me, which is, I welcome. Um, and so I think one thing that really needs to be addressed, and as we talk about the upcoming budget, I'd like it to be considered now going into the budget season is the turnover of rec staff. Mm -hmm. And 
tools and strategies to retain the folks who, who do that work, um, especially kind of the, the coordinator level or the you know, site manager level, I think it's worth paying them a bit more to keep them longer um, and keep that institutional knowledge within Lewiston. Um, so that's one of my first thoughts that has been tumbling around for a while. I think one other thing that it's great if we have all this programming and that will fill someone's time, I'm sure, and then monitoring it. But I think there's also a real need in this community for um, free space for people that they don't have to reserve it, but it's just open gym time or open field time. Um, I think the structures of recreation are referring back to our previous discussion on equity and inclusion. Um, they can be inaccessible to folks. Uh, they don't want to reserve a field or they don't know how to reserve a field and they still want that opportunity to recreate. And I think that's going to be important to preserve going forward. Um, but I know that people don't want to just let everyone in the community um, utilize something without any accountability. So I think if we look at monitors for those spaces, that might be helpful. Um, I think one other consideration that kind of popped into my head as you were talking, Mary, was about um, the career center and some of the adult programming. I highly endorse it. I think it needs to be in a very separate space from where youth programming occurs. Um, I think we just think that like sometimes being in two separate rooms at the armory is sufficient, but I would just really caution that we think about our spaces um, more carefully as we outline that. And then the last thing, um, you, in terms of funding, it sounds like fundraising might be a part of this, um, whether that's in-kind donations or actual fundraising. And I, I would still caution that we, we've leaned really heavily on our business partners and our nonprofits a lot in the past. And I think that's a key part to the poverty subcommittee's recommendations that we heard yesterday. So just making sure that we're aware of what asks have already been made of the members of this community um, going forward. I don't wanna overtax anyone in that way. Um, I think it's preferable to, to add a buck to the, to the taxes um, than to, to really push out our businesses or make them feel like they're being hit from every direction. Um, so just a couple of things that have popped into my head over time. Sorry, I spend a lot of time working on this and thinking about this. So sorry for the deluge. No, I appreciate it. And one of the things we talked about even as an early on as this summer is pop-up basketball where the police department wants to volunteer and they're just gonna show up. And whoever plays, plays. And of course the new soccer field is also in that realm. Um, so just like you said, a monitor with like a pop-up, I'll play, you know, we'll play, we have the balls, we have, you know, whoever wants to do it. Um, but then kind of move that around the city. You know, so it's not just downtown, but it might be out near one of the other schools or in another area of the town as well. So kind of looking at that unscheduled time. Mayor, if I could just add one piece to that uh, as well, just to um, expand a little bit, um, as Marianne May uh, was not here during some of these conversations and, and Councilor Ray reminded me of those soccer conversations. Um, and, you know, I, there was some changes that we've made in terms of the, uh, the Hudson bus fields um, and the approach with those, and those will be much more open. Um, originally, those were going to be um, like every other field we have, scheduled and required. But based on those conversations and hearing, um, you know, through those conversations a need and that we really didn't have a field that, that met that openness to you were speaking with, uh, that was a, me, a decision we made pretty quickly, I think, internally. Uh, Dale Doughty at the time was the public works director and was able to really look at the, the, the designs and such and what we were looking at and able to make some small changes and really uh, uh, just make that approach change on how we'll handle that field uh, to make it more open and not needing a schedule and requiring those some of those hoops that folks need to jump through to be able to get on a field. So it's a start. It's not the, uh, the, uh, the answer for all of it, but uh, just wanted to add that little bit of detail there around that specific uh, issue. All right. Thank you. Councilor Gelinas. Thank you, Mayor. Um, what a wonderful presentation. Thank you for that. Um, you know, it's exciting for me to hear you talk about you know, in the form of recreation, not just like athletics, but also just mental health and some of that stuff that's so important to our community now more than ever. Um, I think that uh, 
Deputy Administrator uh, Dowdy would agree with me that I need to sort of uh, speak on behalf of a lot of my constituents who have approached me regarding the pickleball. <laughs> uh, so that's great to see that as part of the plan. Um, Superintendent Langley, I don't know if you could comment on this, but as I was listening to you know your interview last night about the level of absenteeism in the schools, I, I found myself thinking, you know, just as a parent of you know kids myself, that connection between recreation and school, and so much of that, as we know, is not what it used to be. And I'm not saying that's the whole answer, but you know, there was a statistic in your PowerPoint that you put up there regarding, um, I think it was the 21st Century Foundation statistic, if I'm not mistaken, about the sixth app. And I suspect there's been other studies done as well, you know. And I, I, I think that the importance and the connection of this to academic success is huge. So I wonder if you would comment on that, Superintendent. Yeah, I mean, there's a few levels to that, and I know that. Um... I guess I'll, I'll start with this. I'll say that one of the things we want to do with a school system is make sure that our schools are welcoming to our kids. And I heard an anecdotal story recently, and, and I'll, I'll refrain from using names, but as a kid, you could call the, the armory and then someone pick up the phone. If the floor wasn't being used, you could call a couple of buddies and you could show up and play. And, and, and that's not, it's not like that anymore. I know there's lots of reasons for that, um, but that open access piece um, is really critical. And when we talk about the enrichment activities and the ways in which kids can engage and be supported by adults in our community, it has a fundamental impact on their lives. Everyone can remember that person that they, they learned from really well, that, that might've coached them and, and taught them things about life that was other than at home. Uh, and, and this is that real opportunity. So I, I support it hundred percent. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilor Clement. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Director Brenchick, just one thing that I might mention, you weren't here last year when we went through uh, the throes of budget season and uh, recreation took uh, a lot of discussion and took some hard hits. I hope we're going to be able to address a lot of that this year. A lot will depend on uh, other priorities within the city, I'm sure. One thing that I have noticed, I saw in your program here, I realize this is a work in progress, across the river to certain other community that uh, is not too far away from us, their recreation department has an age-friendly specialist mm -hmm. that caters to the senior divisions uh, more than just playing cribbage, pinochle, and that sort of thing. They get out, they do hikes, they take field trips. I know this for a fact because somebody very near and dear to me participates with that rec department quite regularly because we don't have those offerings here. And I would certainly like to see something uh, for those people, you know, the, the elders in the community who have contributed to the community over the years, now they're trying to enjoy uh, the so-called golden years. I, I think that's a misnomer at times, but uh, nevertheless, uh, I, I would think that we would be trying to cater something in particular to them other than just maybe card games uh, in a building, if, if that's at all possible. Just an idea that I had, and mm -hmm. I thank you. And trying to understand the existing seniors group so that I'm not stepping on toes, but that we're expanding. Um, so just learning that relationship too. I know a little bit of the history there, um, but just starting to build relationships. Well, there is a young lady that, uh, that works for Auburn Rec. Uh, I believe her name is Longley. Mm -hmm. uh, her classification is age friendly specialist, I believe. I and they have a very active program over there. I believe the administrator probably may be a little bit more familiar with it having come to us from them but uh, the offerings that they have you know I, i'm sure with a little forethought and some cooperation amongst the uh, administration the council and the community we could get something like that going over here there's no reason why we should have to cross the river for that mm -hmm. at least in my viewpoint thank you hey thank you uh councilor jensen uh yeah thank you mr mayor um I guess just, uh, well, it's in my mind. Um, yeah, I would definitely agree with what Councillor Clement just said. Um, I mean, wholeheartedly. Um, so I, I definitely agree with that. Um, I, I'm impressed by the presentation. What I love the most about it is it really sends like a strong vision to not only the people in Lewiston, but people outside of Lewiston of what we could be. And I really like that. I often feel like as a, as a council, we don't always focus on the vision that we should because we're kind of preoccupied with a lot of other things. Um, and so it's not always easy to do. So I really like that you do have a vision here. Um, so um, 
I mean, like, it seems like we're on the cusp of a renaissance here in Lewiston. And I think it's going to happen through arts and culture and getting people active in the community. And so this plan really falls in line with that. And I think a huge part of the success in that renaissance is going to be through the school system. Mm -hmm. It's going to be enhanced with the new wing that's at the high school. It's really going to enhance the arts and culture um, um, opportunities in the community, but also making us more known for that as a city, which we really are quite a bit now. And it really should own that moniker, you know, own that, that um, identity. Um, so I'm really happy to see the collaboration with the school district and I, I see so many tremendous opportunities there. Um, some things that, I, that didn't come up to me that you might wanna consider, um, I didn't see too much about any like nature trails per se. Let's do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like the uh, Stanton Bird Club has a uh, thorn crag. They also have uh, like up on Applesass Hill, some areas there. Um, so I love what they do with thorn crag is my favorite place in the world. I was just there like a couple hours ago. Um, getting a hike in before the meeting, mm -hmm. um, one of those rare days I can get off. And so I, um, I would love to see more coordination, I guess, with like the Stanton Bird Club and what they would want us to see from us as a city, ways that we can help them, ways they can help us, just open up communication. Mm -hmm. um, I love the trails at McMahon too. Um, any way that we can increase trails like that. So I guess that's more in terms of nature, but mm -hmm. um, we definitely don't want to over, you know, consider that. Because once you get out of the downtown of Lewiston, which most people, you know, think of Lewiston, they think of that area. The suburbs and rural parts of Lewiston, absolutely beautiful. Um, you know, take a drive down like Dyer Road or something. It's beautiful. There's some great woods and stuff out there. And so I want people to think more about the Lewiston that is, you know, out there by, by No Name Pond Road, by um, um, those parts of Lewiston. So I don't quite know exactly how to do that. Um, so I guess I would offer that kind of feedback to you. And uh, I appreciate the presentation again, and I'm looking forward to what happens next. Hey, thank you, uh, Councilor Khalid. Thank you, Mayor. Um, hi, Marianne. We've definitely had um, conversations over the past, but one thing that I would emphasize is open space. Um, I've also been in part of those conversations and that soccer field is definitely the start. One thing I'm thinking about is the armory, especially during winter seasons, to be open space for a certain amount of days in the week. Um, and in general, me, my, my biggest thing is just community events that build relationships across the board um, with, you know, community members. Um, I know it's COVID and pandemic time, but, um, you know, socializations and self-care. And I saw yoga on there. I was like, yes, please. So um, things like that I, I'm looking forward to. Cooking as well. <laughs> Cooking too. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, you know, a couple of things I'd like to throw out there, Marianne, for your consideration. Uh, I'm a firm believer that a strong rec plays a vital role in our economic development in the community uh, and community well-being. So I, I hope as you work through the process that you can somehow connect the dots, how that's important for a community. Uh, and then I just I want to throw out a couple of areas that uh, hopefully uh, Dufresne Plaza and uh, our amphitheater. I, I think, you know, on a Friday in, in, in downtown Lewiston at Dufresne Plaza, the public would love to see students there either doing art or music. Uh, it, it's like an entertainment that's not costing us any, you know, other than a cost we already will incur to provide those services to the kids. But the general public, I think, would just love walking by during lunchtime, seeing programs going on in public spaces like that. Uh, those are two suggestions, but I'm sure there are other areas we could do pop-up uh, rec programs that, uh, and that would play significantly into economic development. I'm sure our downtown business association would love that. Uh, and I just want to acknowledge, I was, uh, you bring a level of excitement to this plan. So I just want to acknowledge that because uh, that's part of selling this this community. I think, you know, I did the poverty committee presentation yesterday. It was part of it. And uh, I think people are excited about it because we were excited about it. And I think you got this council excited about it because you're excited about it. So uh, I just want to acknowledge that. I do know we have one question from the uh, public, uh, Amy Smith, who has had many conversations recently about Rowan and that's pretty exciting all by itself. Uh, so Amy, whenever you're ready, uh, feel free to comment. 
Yeah, hi guys. It's it's so nice to be included in this. I just want to say I've been in conversations with Marianne and with uh, the mayor and other folks, and Lewiston has the potential to be better than Cambridge, Massachusetts as a rowing destination. So I'm in conversations with other, uh, with the, the entire rowing community across Maine, and we're going to bring an exhibition regatta to uh, Samard Payne in July of this year with the support of Mark and Marianne and a lot of other people. And I'm just really excited because uh, in addition to creating a great event for Lewiston, uh, my long-term goal is to create youth opportunities for high school kids in the downtown to learn this wonderful sport of rowing and, um, and to have opportunities for scholarships in college. And it's, just, it's, a, it's a really exciting moment. And I think that um, in, in understanding the potential of the river as a recreational destination, uh, we're gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. So I just wanted to say, just wanna present that. And in the future, we'll come forward with more details on it, but um, Lewiston has no idea <laughs> how lucky they are to have this natural venue for an amazing uh, regatta. All right, thank you very much, uh, Amy. And appreciate you uh, taking on that challenge that I think you created for yourself on bringing Rowan to Lewiston. And I have to admit, when she first said it to me, I'm like, really, Rowan? But by the end of the conversation with Amy, it's like, oh, we really got to get you connected with some other people to talk about this. So that was exciting. Uh, Marianne, anything you want to add about that rowing conversation? Yes. What your thoughts Amy's are on some, that? Amy's going to do some classes for us. So he's going to have a week for youth and a week for adults. So we can all be part of this. And she is in the process of getting some boats. We're looking at doing some you know, temporary storage in the little red shack and kind of looking at how this can be a part of our community. So very supportive of her and of that effort for sure. Yeah, but I want to take lessons. <laughs> yeah, feel free to sign up our city administrator, deputy, finance director. There's lots of people that would be excited to do that. So a little uh, competition. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments from the council? Okay, seeing none, I just want to check. I see no other hands raised in the uh, in the attendees. Uh, Marianne and Jake, thank you very much. That was a great presentation and uh, feeling great about this city. Every single meeting, council meeting we have, uh, I'm feeling better and better about our city and the next steps that were taken. Uh, and soon, I think our community is gonna see that and we can always talk about it. People, you know, get sick of talking. Uh, but right around the corner, our community members are going to see the hard work that staff and city councilors have done over the past year, and uh, it's going to pay back dividends for us. So thank you all very much. Awesome. All right. Uh, with that, the workshop will be determined over. So thank you all, councilors. <laughs>